Hey guys, and welcome back to, I guess what you could call, the second part of the Super Mario Galaxy playthrough. We're now going to switch over to the second playable character, Luigi. He, I think, can jump higher. Uh, he basically slides when he runs. Uh, you know, when he comes to a stop, he slides everywhere. So he's a little bit hard to control. But uh, otherwise, the challenge hasn't really gone up or gone down at all. We just basically have to do purple coin missions now. He also runs uh, slightly faster than Mario. I actually, I like Luigi more uh, compared to it. Because, you know, yeah, he has piss poor traction, par for the course for Luigi. Uh, but I love the higher jump. I love his longer jump, too. Because he can get some major distance with his long jumping. And, you know, the speed. You know, I like to go fast. We all play Sonic here. So of course, of course. He doesn't actually have a triple jump. He has, like, a, a kind of high hovery jump akin to Super Mario Bros. 2. Well, it's still a triple jump. It's just that he doesn't... He does, he's not as acrobatic as his brother, you know. Mario likes to do, like, the triple somersault. Luigi just likes to stay in place and flutter his feet. Mario has boundless confidence. Luigi pisses himself in fear in the middle of a mansion. <laughs> Luigi likes his head. <laughs> okay, the purple coins. Basically, they come in a variety of flavors. There's your standard one, where you uh, have to just go around collecting stuff without a time limit. It's just nice, clean, wholesome family fun. There's stuff that's on timers. Uh, I think there's, like, harder versions of stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. A Vasty, a Gold Egg Galaxy mission where we don't start on that one same planet the whole time. Oh, this, this is throwing me for a loop. I'm confused. Are we sure this is the same galaxy? There's no enemies here. I only just realized this. Well, you want to count the boulders? Um, well, are they sentient? Can we count them? Should we count them? I think is the main question here. They do it. They do damage. Yeah, it's an obstacle. Yeah, well, so is a knife if you fall on it. It don't mean it's <laughs> planning to murder you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Things got a bit meta metaphysical for my tastes in this part. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, when it comes to Luigi, he's really the most rewarding character to play if you can play through a level without stopping much. Yeah. The only thing that you have to watch out for when you're playing as Luigi is to not stop while running. If you have to stop, hop first. Yes. Or spin. Spin in midair. Yeah. Or just run in circles until you're ready to go again. Oh, just throw your Wii boat and the Wii console out the window and you have to deal <laughs> turn, with his turn, bullshit. Turn the game off. Turn the game off. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, he has poor traction, but only when stopping. He runs just fine. He doesn't handle badly at all. No, I want to say control-wise, he's just as uh, nimble as Mario. When it comes to turning, anyway, yeah. Interesting thing to know, he's... Roughly around the same size as Mario and the actual Luigi in game, who you can find and leads to some very awkward conversations, is uh, much taller overall. Well, wait, wait. The, the, this Luigi model here is the same size as Mario. I, well, roughly, you can kind of tell they like tweaked a few things on Mario's model and like up the size slightly. The main in-game Luigi is still taller overall. Well, oh yeah, because well, canonically Luigi is taller than Mario, but that reminds me of. Some of the beta elements of Luigi's Mansion, uh, for the GameCube original, where Mario was originally going to be like a second player for some co-op. I think they end up scrapping, but they tweaked Mario's model to be as tall as Luigi. And it's about as weird as it sounds. Well, I I'm not saying that this Luigi that we're playing as is the same size as Mario. He's still slightly taller, you know, as you said, he is the taller brother. But the main Luigi in-game is obviously much lankier. I think just to differentiate between the two when you're standing next to each other. Yeah, it may have something to do with um, uh, animation rigs. Yeah, animation Hitboxes rigs. Is it's going to be a... Well, you can, you can apply the same animation rig to bodies of many shapes and sizes, as Bioware aptly demonstrates in, with their many alien races <laughs> all sharing the same fucking robotic animations in every cutscene ever. Uh, but uh, but the, the real thing is uh, shape and size of a character model is actually fairly important when, when considering a platforming level's design. Especially especially if there are crusher hazards or things of that nature around. Now, I kind of haphazardly or awkwardly described the uh, nature of the purple coin missions. Um, 
When I said linear, I meant stuff like Good Egg, where they're basically all set around the path. Then you have the wide, expansive ones, where it can, it can take a while if there's like some that are kind of hard to find. Uh, not so much in this one. It's it's big, but it's doable. When you get to stuff like Freeze Flame, they start putting them on like the very lips of like mountains and whatnot, and you can just be like, you go to the top of the mountain. Oh shit! I've only got 98. Oh, there they were, right at the bottom. I know exactly what you're talking about, and that's why Freeze Flame is my least favorite purple coin mission in Super Mario Galaxy. There you go, John. A bit of going up the slide action. How do you like them apples? Okay, I, I, I enjoy you doing that very much. But, uh, you know, I'll keep it G-rated. The exploring the galaxy type uh, purple coins, not a fan of. It brings me back to the days of the 100 coin missions of Super Mario 64 or Sunshine, even though they are... Not as painful because they're the coins are all scattered. They're, they're there. They exist. It's not a matter of you defeating an enemy to get these coins and hoping they don't disappear within a, an allotted time. I, I, oh, that's just the main reason why I despise those missions. You know, it's, that's not the case here. But you still got to go out of your way to collect a hundred of them. And uh, you know, I can I can do without that. I'm more of a fan of the linear purple coin hunts. And it's a hundred for each purple coin on. I probably should have mentioned that. Boy, I'm really fucking up today, aren't I? Oh my god. How will you live with yourself, Tom? How will I live? <laughs> one of the major th one of the major things to keep in mind is that in the timed purple coin missions, there are usually way more purple coins than you actually need in the levels. But when there's no timer, you basically have to get every purple coin that exists. Like like, if you miss one, you're going to wind up scouring the place for it. So, I, okay, so out of all the variations of the Purple Coin missions available, what would you guys say is your favorite and least favorite? Um, my favorite would probably have to be the one where you're kind of, like, on a set track. Um, not like the ones where you're on an automated platform and you can miss them. They're, those are my least favorite. I mean, ones like Good Egg. Yes, okay, so super linear, but you don't have a time limit. Yeah, alright. Uh, I'm inclined to agree. And, um, what, what about you, Ryan? Uh, I'm pretty similar, although I do kind of like some challenge ones that are timed. Depends on what they are, like the Mario one in Toy Time is alright. But, uh, just these big scattered ones are kind of annoying just because of how long they take. Yeah, I'm definitely a bigger fan of the timed ones myself. They feel more like skill challenges than, uh... Well, collectathons through territory you've already covered in other missions, you know? That, that's a good point, actually. How do we feel about this being a reward of sorts for actually getting, like, 104, 105 stars and uh, beating Bowser again? <sighs> Well, I, I put up with, you know, I never really thought about that. It's an interesting question, but what regardless of what I think of the Purple Coin missions as a reward, in quotes, for getting the regular stars is moot because I enjoy the reward that you get for, for getting all 120 stars, which is, of course, Luigi. But the missions themselves, eh, I could have done without them. I appreciate them being just a better designed 100 coin missions from 64 and Sunshine. But could I have done without them? Yeah, I probably could. Probably would have had a little more unique stars like the Green Trial Galaxies and uh, and the like. Do you prefer this over the Green Star Hunt in Galaxy 2? Yes. Yes, I do. Because there are 120 green stars. There are only... What was the number again? Purple coin? 16? 15. 15. No, no, because uh, Tom said 104 stars is what you need, so it would have to be 16, right? Well, no, no, the 105th is the uh, final grand star. Ah, that's right, that's right. Uh, so you're not the only one fucking up, Tom. I'm joining <laughs> you on your side. We're going to have some tea. Choo-choo, all aboard the fuck-up train. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, this isn't technically a post-game reward. If you get 104, go fight Bowser. You don't have to fight him a second time to trigger this, and that's all Bowser is really—a trigger to like make you know post-game cutscenes and such activate. It's more of like an additional challenge, really. But for what it is, it's kind of calming for the most part until you get to stuff like Freeze Frame, which can go fuck itself. Now you've gone and missed two. 
purple star coins, and uh, one of them is way up top. Like in the hands of a really crummy developer, this would probably be DLC that's way overpriced. But with Nintendo, you get it for free. Out, out the goodness of me own all, love. Just have it, have it. Take it. Take it! Yeah, here, here's more of the pie instead of the rest of it. Now, it's a good thing you figured out where that purple coin was. Otherwise, you could have been lost and confused for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, that would be awful just to sit here casually combing the level trying to find one simple solitary purple coin. We're not a freeze flame yet, Tom. <laughs> I never said it happened there. <laughs> but it's happened to everyone, even you, Jim. Even me, and even you. And um, that's basically your first taste of the Purple Coin missions. We shall be back next time for all this and even more. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>